Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on the workflow for assigning a flange plated moment connection for a beam and column splice. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application. And as you can see, I've already created a beam splice and a column splice joint within this model. Both of these joints were modeled with both shear and moment reactions imposed upon them that must be resisted through some sort of connection design. Now in this video, we're gonna be preparing to assign a flange plated moment connections to both of these joints to take care of the moment component of the reaction. To handle the shear component of the reaction, as you can see, I've already assigned a single plate shear connection to them. Now, when you're ready to start your process for assigning your moment connection, you can highlight your joint, and I'm gonna start with the beam splice for this example, and then you can go to the assign icon. Now, the flange plated moment connections for splices are available as either a basic or a smart connection option. I'm gonna to go to the basic connection for my beam splice, and I'm gonna to look towards the bottom of the list and I'm looking for the acronym BSFP, that would be Beam Splice Flange Plate. And you can see here that I have both a bolted and a welded option. I'm gonna try the bolted option first. RAM Connection has assigned a connection successfully to this joint, and then I'm gonna click on the close icon. Now within the joint selection area, I'll be able to see the status of the overall connection design. This will indicate the status of whichever connection on this particular joint is highest. And I can see that since the interaction ratio is in green and it's less than 1.0, that both connections assigned to this particular joint have passed the code check and no warnings were issued. If I would like some further information on the connection design for either the moment or the shear connection, I can go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the edit icon. Let's review the moment connection, which for this example is our flange plated connection. Now, if I scroll down in the data area over at the left-hand side, you can see all the pieces of information that I could customize for this connection design, including the connector information, the thickness and the plate material. And I can also review the bolting information. If I wanted to, I could change from a bolted to a welding connection as well. Now with a bolted connection selected, I can customize the spacing of the bolts, the hole type, and actually the bolt type as well. If I would like some additional information, I can come up to the ribbon toolbar and click on the results icon to review my connection report. Within this report, I'd be able to see all of the geometric considerations and design checks that were performed. And I could see that everything has currently passed the code check for the connection I have assigned. If I would like some additional information, I can click on the view formulas icon to see all of the equations and variables that were used to arrive at these results. The last thing I can take a look at while in the connection pad is the DXF view. I can customize this DXF and export to a drawing for my detailing purposes. Now I didn't make any changes for this particular connection design, so it's not necessary to save at this point. So I could just go ahead and close out of the connection pad. Let's go ahead and move forward and take a look at our column splice joint. Again, I've already taken care of the shear reaction through a single plate column splice connection type. And now I'm ready to assign the flange plate to take care of the moment component of the reaction. To start this process, I'm gonna to go to the assign icon available in the design tab of the ribbon toolbar. And I'm gonna go back to a basic connection workflow. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna find the acronym CSFP, column splice flange plate. And again, you can see I have both a bolted and welded option. This time, let me go ahead and select the welded option. I'm gonna confirm that RAM 
connection has assigned a connection to that joint. And again, I'm going to take a look at the joint selection area and I can see that both the shear and the moment connections have passed the code check. To review this information further, we can click on the edit icon and go to the moment connection. This again will bring us to the connection pad where we can review and modify the information as needed. You can see here that I can modify the connector information, the connection to the top column and also the connection to the bottom column. I can change between bolted or welded for either of these options. Now once you're done reviewing your information in the connector pad, we can go ahead and close out of here. We didn't make any changes, so I could just click no. Now this concludes our process for assigning a flange plated moment connection to both a beam splice and a column splice joint within RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.